All right. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Nick at Stridewise.com, and I am so delighted to be here in Montreal with Brendan Spark, the founder and CEO of Naked and Famous oh. Denim, which I would consider the most important and impactful and influential uh, denim company in, in, in the world of selfish oh. denim at the very least. Oh my, all right, well, thank you for the compliment. I've been like giddy as a, as a schoolgirl the whole time I've been here. It's like, it's really, I'm, I'm very humbled and uh, genuinely terrified to be in your presence because I consider you something of a demigod. Oh man, that's that's too much. I just like pants. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got a, a couple of videos we're gonna be doing here, but this one, I really, I had this idea when we came through the door, the weirdest denim that Naked and Famous has come out with. Naked and Famous is, uh, of course, known for pushing the boundaries of what is possible and what was ever considered possible in the realm of fabrics, and you guys have just keep on pushing the boundaries. Um, and so Brandon has come up with it. He's, he's gone into his office and he's brought out, of all the history of the company, the, the weirdest pairs of jeans. Yes. It's hard to narrow it down to just five pairs. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure if these are the weirdest, but they're the weirdest that I could get quickly, uh, you know, from scrummaging around my office. But by way of introduction, why are you so obsessed with challenging the definition of denim? Why are you such an anti-traditional traditionalist? I mean, we do traditional stuff too, but I love um, doing right. it. No it's, so, it's so traditional and also non-traditional. Yes. At the same time. Yes, of course. No, exactly. These, this, this, like these fabrics on the table here are very not traditional. Exactly like you said. Uh, we make basic stuff, but. This is more fun. Like this is the stuff that like gets me up in the morning. You know, I get to go to work. I get to make the craziest like stuff that, that no one will ever make. And sometimes we will see a fabric or we'll come up with an idea and we'll just be like, we have to make this. Well, and then people are like, why? Why do you make some? I'm like, because no one else is going to make this. You know, like no one else is ever going to buy this. Like sometimes even a mill will like you know do a test on something because someone there has like a crazy idea and like, oh, no one's going to buy this. And like, oh well, we know who's going to buy it. I mean, I think people just like you know we we have a true passion for it. So I think people read into that and like it themselves. Themselves. and we just have fun we want to make fun shit and people just get that I think and people like fun and so yeah. we make fun fabrics what's first up on the weird all right uh, so I guess in no particular order we'll, we'll talk about one that is like an actual modern one that not that we did a long time ago but one that is about to come out so this is not come out yet but it's pretty damn weird we call it the king of lords if you're a fan of our brand you might already remember that we had the um, king of slub which was the slubbiest denim ever made so like a slub yarn is is when you use this wavy yarn or you put a multiple wavy fibers together you spin wavy fibers and you get a bumpy yarn out of it so we said, let's challenge a yarn company and let's build the slubbiest yarn we could ever get our hands on. And that's what we did. So I actually feel super honored because we got to work with a Japanese yarn company. Not Most times, you know, you, you work with the weaver and, and the weaver will say, okay, we have these warps, we have these wefts, like, you know, let's see what we can build. But in this case, we got to build a custom yarn, which very few companies get to do. So that was amazing. That was the king of slub. And then after that, we made another jean called the Lord of Nep, where it was like the neppiest denim ever. We have one on the wall back back there uh, if you can see it or I can I can grab it so this was this like super neppy denim uh, this is a 14 ounce denim we put an ostrich skin patch on it too it's like it's covered in like snow. yeah exactly uh, someone's like oh there's lint on your jeans I'm like no that's supposed to be there actually it's funny because most companies will try to avoid the nep as much as possible yeah. like these are kind of like imperfections so we said okay we want to blast it with as many imperfections as you can get the neppiest yarn ever again we got to work with the yarn company yeah so after we made those two jeans we said all right how can we make the crazy weirdest gene let's combine the two so we did a melange of the two of them so uh, for this gene for the king of lords we took the warp yarn from the king of slub and then added the weft yarn from the lord of nep and so you have the king of lords a 23 ounce super slubby super neppy crazy denim i would say that counts as crazy it's so funny how like slub and nep are the irregularities and their like results of like the really old equipment making like each pair of jeans like none of the no jeans are like identical when woven on these old vintage shuttle looms and like today people consider those faults in the jeans like when i walk around with like my uh, my neppy jeans people are like oh you got you got some pilling <laughs> yeah exactly some piling you know like it's like you, those must be bad quality jeans i'm like you idiot <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> to teach their own it's a beautiful fault yeah exactly teach their own but yeah you can imagine that like it's back like a beauty mark like it's a well yeah oh yeah well, you like the Marilyn monroe <laughs> uh or the cindy crawford all right that's awesome. number five the king of lords i'll put a Thank link you. in the description all right number the next one number all right four, uh, not in any order yeah they're not in any order but these ones were pretty weird this is our thermochromic denim so uh you might remember those like t-shirts from 
the 1980s. So, well, if you're old enough to remember stuff from the 1980s, that kind of changed colors with body heat. So we're like, okay, man, we got to make jeans that change colors with body heat. These ones were actually near a heater, so they already got uh, quite heated. But you can see uh, right here that they change colors uh, with heat. Uh, most people ask me like, oh, what happens if you, uh, you know, rip one while you're around? Uh, yeah, oh yes, it, uh, it will work. Does it really? That's oh so yes, fun. oh yes. Um, was this popular or was there a lot of people like, I don't want people to know so, what about it? I mean like, this is obviously very weird. And so it's certainly not for everybody, but it's like, it's so much fun and it's so weird. And it's just like, why wouldn't you want something that's fun and weird? Um, you know, it doesn't have to be your everyday gene, but like, it's a great party trick. We wore them in Thailand one time, or my cousin wore them in Thailand one time. We did an event there. It was like uh, 35 degrees Celsius or like 40 degrees Celsius. And we were all sweating our yeah. balls off. So his jeans were just fully white the whole time. You didn't see any blue. Yeah. And then he said, watch this. And he went to get like an iced coffee and he put the iced coffee down on his uh, leg. He put it away and it was and it became blue because right. he cooled it back down. How long does this last for? Is it, is it, will it always do this? Or yeah, I mean, question? these particular jeans are uh, like a bunch of years old and they, and they, they and it still, still works. Yeah. yeah. But I imagine if you wash them out like 30, 40 times, it'll probably start to go away. So thankfully, uh, no one washes their jeans around. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Next one that is pretty weird uh, is these ones. I guess they're not that weird, but they're kind of weird because they're a purple denim. They're like a lavender denim with a silver selvage edge and this like faux ostrich, uh, like teal, aquamarine, whatever color uh, leather patch. And uh, just the funny story about this was like, more than 10 years ago. It must have been like 2009 when we did these jeans. We were, we were selling at Barney's and we were just like doing really well there. And we just were like, oh, they, they wanted like send us more weird and innovative and crazy things. So uh, I was in Japan and I was just like asking the mills like, hey, do you have anything left over from like years ago that you, that you were just like, oh, do you have like a few hundred meters of this or 200 meters of that? And they, they take me to the back room of some of the mills and, they look, and I'm just looking, wow, I found this like lavender purple fabric selvage with a silver selvage edge. And I'm like, okay, I'm probably gonna buy this. So I, I take this watch, I show it to my dad who works with us every day. And I said, hey, what do you think of this? And he's like, that's too crazy. Nobody wants to buy that. Like, what, what is the, who wants purple jeans with a silver selvage edge? And I'm like, no, I think we can sell it. And he's like, I don't think you should do it. But anyway, we bought it. And uh, we sold them and Barney said they sold everything out in like a week. So it was, it was a very happy ending to a pretty weird denim. Purple lavender jeans. This, this yeah. is 10 years ago. Have you run anything like this since? We've never done any other purple jeans. We've done like uh, pomegranate uh, dyed stuff, but it was like a darker, richer red. Yeah. We've never done a lavender jean since. I don't know, and I don't think we will do a lavender jean ever again. All right. Um, this, this is some, some really, uh, some, ex some expensive high, some, some valuable property here. Yeah, this, very, very is, oh, this, this, this is the only one I have. There's a few jeans where there's like the only one I have. Very cool. Um, this one is also uh, like, um, I mean, it's crazy. It's not as weird, but I think to me, I definitely consider it weird slash crazy because it is 100% cashmere selvage denim. Uh, so basically instead of cotton, it, it, the warp is cashmere, the weft is cashmere, uh, and it is in fact a denim. It's like a three by one denim construction. This one is black warp by white weft, but 100% cashmere. Check it out, selvage with a pink selvage edge. I don't know if you can get that, if you can see that on the camera, but uh, there's a little pink selvage edge to it. Uh, yeah, they're wild. Like they're not big, tough uh, guy jeans. You know, they're not our uh, our 32 ounce uh, tough guy jeans you're gonna wear on your motorcycle. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, they're so flowy and luxurious and soft. And who's ever heard of 100% cashmere denim? And again, someone asked me like, why would you do these? And I'm like, I did these because no one else will ever do them. <laughs> cashmere is, a, it's wool from goats, isn't that right? Yeah, it's wool, it's wool from goats. Goats have like the exterior hairs, which are, which are called the guard hairs, and then the inside hair, the belly hair. Um, and they use the, those inside hairs. Uh, like softer and like better yeah. and regulating. The staple of, of the fibers are longer. And uh, even depends which goat you use. Like, you know, the, the goats in the hills in India, they drink this like unfettered water source and they have like a longer hair and it's uh, more white so they don't have right. to bleach it and stuff That's to change the colors. That's like cashmere region. Yeah. This is fur on the... On the uh, oh yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, the patch is just a hair on uh, leather. I thought like we needed something like soft and yeah, luxurious yeah. to kind of go with it. So uh, we did that fun patch. We only sold, I, I don't know, like eight of these. Really? Uh, yeah, I think Barney's, Hold Renfrew, and then like another store in Vancouver uh, bought them. I think they were 1400 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like years ago. If we did this, I actually researched doing them again, yeah. uh, and they would even be more expensive. But yeah, 100% cashmere uh, denim is not cheap. This is a soft kind of uh, 
farmy sort of feeling. What, what is this on the last page? Yeah, so I mean, I, I, this is another one that we did a long time ago. This is a sample, that I, I guess the leather patch is not on it, but this is our snowboard or I guess snow pant jeans. So this is a denim that has bonding to, to it. And so it's fully waterproof. It lets, um, you know, it lets you perspire and it lets the water exit, but it doesn't let it penetrate inside. So uh, I, I just think these are pretty wild uh, of something that we did a long time ago. And we actually had people send us pictures of them like snowboarding in the jeans and stuff. And yeah, they're, they're totally waterproof. We did a, like a panel down here so you could fit it over your boot. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see that. They're waterproof and they're windproof and they're lined with what is it, like yeah, so it's, so it's not lining, it's uh, it's it's a, it's a bonding, okay. and it's basically a bonded membrane. Uh, I don't remember off by heart what, it, man, it was like 10 years ago that we did this. Yeah. I don't remember what the, it is made out of exactly. Some polyester or something, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's definitely weird. All right. Snow pant jeans that are waterproof. Those are the five weirdest jeans that uh, we we came up with for this uh, with, with Brandon. But real quick, what are a few of the other weird jeans? Oh yeah, I mean like you only limit me to five, but there, we have some, uh, we have uh, like the glow in the dark jeans. We have uh, rainbow core jeans. We did possum hair jeans. We've done green tea dye. We've done uh, oh, so many more. There's milk yarn. Dye. Yeah, we have the milk yarn ones. We've done uh, Teflon coated. You can take wine and pour them on and they'll just like sprinkle right off. We've done alternating twill jeans. So we have a jean that is right hand twill, left hand twill, broken twill, all in the same denim fabric. And many, many more. So, yeah, so many wild ones. Reflective denim. Dude, yeah, we got all the core stuff. Uh, we did this paint coated denim, which was super unbreathable. We've done linen blend, wool blend, lots well, of crazy stuff. Well, thank you very much for sitting down and showing me uh, these five very weird jeans. Oh, the one last one. Yes. Scratch and sniff. Do you know our uh, scratch and sniff? Scratch and sniff jeans. <laughs> Those are pretty funny. We're gonna do a new one for a, a future season. But yeah, we did mint scratch and sniff, raspberry scratch and sniff. And for a store on the East Coast, Atlantic provinces, we did Canadian conifer tree. Scratch and stuff. Yeah. Wow. The Willy Wonka of denim, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, well, here's some many more weird jeans in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, uh, and get your uh, King of Lords if they happen to be available when you happen to watch Coming, coming out soon. All right, okay, cool. Thank you for your time. Thank you, my man. <laughs>